Okay, we're going to deal with um, a, about two or three different kind of workflow tasks we can do in SSIS. Um, and um, this is basically the building blocks of any data that you're going to um, pull in from any kind of source, whether it be um, Access, Excel, Oracle, whatever. Um, the basics here is just basically how do we deal with the data once we've got it into the um, integration services engine and how how do we spit it out to the format that we desire? So to this end, what I've done is on the pcteach.me website um, on this relevant post, you will be able to download the accessory file that I've got on here. Um, you don't have to, you can make your own up if you want to, um, but for speed of use, I've already created something called data conversion. So if you get the zip file, all you've got to do is unzip it to your C drive. And what you'll have is the following um, structure. You'll have the data conversions folder, which would contain the project that I'm going to talk about um, but just jump back up again we also have an Excel spreadsheet which is what we're going to use for the purpose of this demonstration so what we're going to do to start with is just let's have a look at the data that we're going to pull in um, so this is the employee spreadsheet it's very simple very very basic let me just size this down um, and all we've got inside here is just like first name last name age date of birth location telephone salary now I must stress that if you're going to do warehousing or anything like that you would never have an age column why well that is prone to change because tomorrow those numbers will um, alter if I press a moment um, but what would happen is these numbers will start ticking up each second moment of the day because if you look at the top it's just a simple calculation to work out how old they are um, you wouldn't have age but I'm using it as an example for data conversion what I want to pay attention to really is that the first name and last names are all in lower case or they could be a hodgepodge of different cases um, the age is obviously really wrong because you never say I'm 22.24 years old you would say you are 22 years old so I'm going to be showing you some of the pitfalls as well with the conversion so with that in mind please inspect it to your um, heart's content but I'm just going to close this and carry on now if you have actually brought in um, the um, package that I, I've created I'm just going to open this up and what we'll have really is just one package off to the side now one of the precursors before opening this package is make sure if you if you're going to follow me precisely with this um, download is in SQL Server you've already created a database called test doesn't matter where you actually create the files as long as there's a database called test it should work so with test done there's no tables um, and we're going to create them in a second so back into the package I'm just going to double click to open it up and what I'll find straight away is that there is an error at the moment because it's trying to put it to a table that doesn't exist, which, which we'll get to. It's a simple package. All I'm doing is two particular tasks in the workflow. Um, the first one is to do a truncate of the table. So just have a brief look at that. All it's doing is literally this bit here, truncate table. Fair enough. And then that then proceeds to the um, employee's data flow task, which I always put a DF in front. So if we go to the data flow tab, um, you'll see that I've got an Excel um, data source. Let's just bring them up here. And as you can see, I've got an um, Excel source, ADO.net, OLDDB, etc., etc. I've chosen an Excel um, data source, and I've to chosen where it is in the Excel Connection Manager down here as just being in C data conversion employees. Hence why I say put the zip file on the C drive. So with that done, I can now um, look at the um, individual bits which I'm going to do on, on this um, to get it nice and neat. So first of all, if I just go to the columns, it's automatically bringing in first name, last name, age, location, etc. Um, but the way it's going to appear isn't going to be perfect. It's going to look a bit um, on the NAF side. I mean, if I preview it, you can see it's in lower case, as I've already mentioned. So what we're going to do is we're going to tidy this up. So this is where we come to our next lot of options. Now, the first one I want to come to is data conversion. Um, one of our subscribers actually asked about data conversion. So here we are. 
Um, so inside data conversion, what have we got? Well, what I've opted to do is only look at two particular fields, the age and the salary. So what I want to do is I don't really want to see the age as 24.2, I just want to see 24. So what I'm doing is I've selected the age field and then I've given it a new alias and I'm calling it int age and then telling it what data type to have. So a two-bit um, signed integer basically is a tiny int. Now how, how do we do this? Well it's just very simple. All you do is you select the field you want to work on, so let's say date of birth, and it immediately puts a new input column at the bottom. What you have to do is give it a new name because from that point onwards you will have two fields. You'll have the date of birth field and this new field that you're actually converting here. So with that um, done as copy of date of birth, I can click on the drop down box and choose all the different data types. If you're struggling for the data types and what they all mean, have a look at books online, which you should have with SQL, and that will actually give you a full rundown of what they all are. There's too many to discuss on this video. Now, in my case, I don't want that. I'm just gonna cancel it and go back in. So data conversion, as long as you've put the pathway through, all you do is you select the particular field and then you give it a new output alias and specify the data type you want it to go to. So with that done, um, on age, what have I done with salary? Well, salary has just gone in as a number field in the Excel file. I want to actually convert it to a currency and we'll see the differences at the end result. Now, really, with data conversion, there's not a great deal you do. You just select the field and then convert it to an appropriate one. What can quite often happen is what you're trying to do in regards converting isn't actually a conversion task. What you want to do is do derived columns. Now, let's have a look at derived columns. What I've done here is I've done quite a few different ones to, to see how it works. Um, for example, when you run um, a data conversion on a... Um, um, single or double number, i.e. it's got decimal places, um, when you convert it to int, it will round up automatically, which if I'm 22.8 years old, I don't want to become 23 because I am still 22. So what we have then is a different option, which is how we would do these derived columns, where we would specify um, a new um, field. In this case, I'm choosing floor age, which means the lowest level of a number, and I'm just using the function of floor. If if I want the upper end, um, i.e. if I'm 22.8 and I do want to become 22, uh, 23, then I would choose ceiling. Now I'm also doing another option which is the password option, um, which is just an extra field I'm creating, which is just going to reverse the last name and then add their age to the very end of the actual text. And then finally, to tidy up the um, lowercase um, option, I'm telling it to um, replace the first name um, with an upper case version of it and ditto with last name. Now let's just cancel that. Um, and then finally I'm also telling it to sort. So if I go into here, you'll see that I've got, um, I'm sorting it on age only in an ascending order. But again, you just choose what you want, like last name, and then you specify what you want it to do. Now, finally, we've got this problem here, which is the X. Now, the reason being is you've created the database, but we haven't created the table. So very simple to fix. We just double click on it and just choose new and just change the create table to employee and OK. And then you should be good to go. So if I just OK that, I'm going to just right click on the package here and choose execute package and it should run through relatively quickly. As you can see, it's gone through successfully and seven rows have been exported. So let's just have a look in SQL now. So in tables, let me just refresh. I should see the employee table. Let's um, have a look at the results. And you'll see now that all the first names and last names are in capitals. Age is still coming across because I told it to. Um, but look over to the side now. I've got int age, which is 21. Um, but look, the age is 20.9. So technically, I'm still 20, but it rounds up. That's the data conversion task. Whereas with the other options, like the functions of floor and ceiling, you can see that you can control it better. So by and large, the conversion data task will convert from one data type to another but quite often the result you may get is not perfect so with time almost out on this video um, I would like you just to have a look at this and have a play around but the key things are that there are really two 
areas to look at, which is the data conversion, which changes data types, but you're more likely to look at the derived column. And as a personal note, I would say that if you are going to go down the route of putting in reverse of last name and text, it's much better to do it in the SQL prior to putting it into SSIS, pure and simply because of performance. So have a play, um, have a look at it, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.